In this video, we visit the insanely haunted Old Park Hotel in Ballinger, Texas, and I share a really crazy EVP. But first, my name is Tui Snyder. I write books, I give talks, and I do a lot of research. I love finding interesting stuff and sharing it with you. So please take a moment to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. Today, I'm going to tell you about the Old Park Hotel and one of the weirdest experiences I've ever had on a ghost hunt. But I'm getting a little ahead of myself, so let me set the scene. When Becky Vickers invited me to investigate Old Park Hotel, I leapt at the chance. Not only is Becky friendly and fun, but she's an accomplished ghost hunter. Becky leads tours at the infamous Old Alton Bridge near Denton, Texas. Over the years, this haunted hotspot has gained the nickname Goatman's Bridge. You might have even heard of it. Becky Vickers and her team, Beck's Ghost Hunters, were featured on the TV show Ghost Adventures during an investigation at Goatman's Bridge. Becky's also written a book about Goatman's Bridge. I've read it. It's really good. Anyway, I'll put links to Becky's stuff in the description below. Also in attendance was Greg Stevens from Research and Investigation of the Paranormal, or RIP for short. While Greg didn't have his team with him, he brought decades of experience along with a whole heap of equipment. I met Greg several years ago while doing research for my travel guide to haunted places, a book called Paranormal Texas. Since then, I've been with Greg on several paranormal investigations. He is always very organized and professional. I'll put his information in the description box, too. The Old Park Hotel is owned by Dan LaFave and his wife, Connie. Dan has investigated the paranormal for decades, and he's been featured on the news several times regarding famous hauntings in the San Antonio area. I'd never met him before, but I liked him right away. Not only did Dan give everyone a thorough pre-investigation tour of his haunted property, but he stayed with us during the actual ghost hunt. I guess I'd better put links to Dan's info in the description box, too. With so many seasoned investigators under one roof, I knew we were in for an exciting night. I say we because rounding out this crew was my husband, Larry. In addition to being my spouse, Larry's a mad scientist and devout skeptic. Larry is so set in his non-beliefs, in fact, that I nicknamed him Archie Debunker. Even so, Larry is not able to debunk every single thing we encounter. This was one such example. The Old Park Hotel is located in the charming West Texas town of Ballinger. And I just, I fell in love with that theater sign when we were there. I wanted to take it home. And Ballinger is one of the few Texas towns that still uses their original Carnegie Library building as their library. However, as much as I love books, we weren't there to read. We had a paranormal investigation to get to. Like most historic buildings, the Old Park Hotel has been through several incarnations. It's housed so many different businesses over the years. At one point, it was even a secret brothel. More recently, the old building served as a resale shop, and it was crowded with antiques. So one theory for why the Old Park Hotel is so haunted is that some of those antique objects might have had spiritual attachment you know, with them. Alrighty. Now, if you've never been on an actual paranormal investigation, but maybe you've seen some TV shows, you might not realize how much time it takes to set up a ghost hunt. It usually takes a couple of hours for a paranormal team to get a haunted loca location ready for an actual investigation. Beck's Ghost Hunters was no different. By the time Larry and I arrived, they had already chosen a room as their command center. This is an important part of a serious paranormal investigation, and at least one person remains at the command center at all times. If they notice unusual activity in one of their monitored locations, they'll let the other team members know. As soon as Larry found a comfortable couch to sit on and read his Kindle, I poked my head into the command center. I was about to ask if they needed any help when I heard a man's voice call out, Alan, Alan, from the hotel entryway. This was a really loud voice and everyone downstairs heard it. Since uh, all the men in our group were accounted for, a couple of us crossed the hall to greet this newcomer. I assumed it was a friend of Dan's. Who else would walk right into the hotel without even knocking? 
Much to our surprise, the entryway was empty and the front door was locked. Even so, I stepped outside. I, I looked around on the sidewalk and the street. It was empty. Dan had told us that disembodied voices are a common occurrence at the Old Park Hotel, but we didn't expect to hear one so early on. This was still the late afternoon. It, it wasn't even dark yet. To me, that experience was a good reminder that just because we weren't ready for the ghost hunt to start, it didn't mean that the spirits were going to wait for us. Anyway, we had a whole bunch of anomalous experiences that night at the Old Park Hotel, but the one I really want to focus on in this video involves a phenomenon that I had never personally experienced before, a doppelganger. So, what is a doppelganger? Basically, a doppelganger is an identical version of someone else. I'd heard of the idea before, but up until that night, I didn't take it seriously. I dismissed doppelgangers as sheer folklore. I figured that before photography, it was easy for people to be confused or tricked by similar looking people. I certainly didn't think doppelgangers were something that could fool us in this day and age. Well, haha! <laughs> Was I ever in for a surprise? My ghostly double made herself known early in the night. Immediately after we heard that disembodied voice shouting, Alan, I went upstairs to a spot where Dan says investigators often catch EVPs. In fact, we'd actually caught one earlier that afternoon. I might post that later. So while the team was getting finished setting up downstairs, I had a little, you know, a quick little EVP session. After turning my digital recorder on, I simply asked a question out loud and then mentally counted to 10 before asking another question. Rather than talk the whole time, I wanted to leave plenty of blank recording space for spirits or, you know, whatever it is that creates an EVP to add their voice to the recording. At one point, I go, I'm just wondering if I have any company up here with me before slowly counting to 10 in my head. I was yeah, about to ask another question when Greg hollered up the stairwell. He asked if I was singing, and I said no. I have a rather sing-song voice, in case you hadn't noticed, so I figured that's what Greg had mistaken for singing. Later, though, I talked to him, and he insisted that it wasn't you talking, this was singing, and she sounded just like you. Even so, I still didn't quite give Greg's mark remarks much thought. I mean, have you ever been told that you looked or sounded like someone else, but then when you finally got a chance to see or hear that person, you could barely see the similarity? On the other hand, there was this one time when I saw a guy who looks just like Hugh Jackman as Wolverine at my grocery store. So, you know, it wasn't even Halloween, and I still don't know what the story was there. But whatever the case may be, that night at the Old Park Hotel, I was pretty sure Greg must have heard someone else and confused it with me. The next day, however, when we were driving home, Becky messaged me and Greg and she said she could hear a woman singing on her tape recorder and that the woman sounded just like me. Becky was so excited about it that she missed her exit and had to pull off the road. So I immediately went through my digital recordings from the Old Park Hotel investigation. I still didn't expect much, but it was one of the first EVP sessions from the night, so it was easy to find. Okay, now I'm going to play both of those recordings from the Old Park Hotel. Now, please note, you'll have a better chance of hearing this EVP if you use headphones. And also, I'm not sure why, but when I included the recording in this video, I can't seem to make it as loud and clear as it is directly from my digital recorder so I apologize about that. I'm still learning and I'm open to suggestions and if I can find a way to do this better, I will share it in the future. In the meantime, I do share recordings of this EVP at the link there, it says bit.ly Tui Twin. And don't worry about remembering that link because I'll share it in the description box below for you. So here we go. Just wondering if I have any company up here with me. Yeah! No! Where are you? Okay, so far so good, right?
But now listen to what Becky's tape recorder picked up at the exact same time. I didn't know it, but she had left a tape recorder running on a table next to me. So let's see if we can hear what she recorded. Chewy. Yeah. Are you singing? No. Where are you? Did you hear it? What freaks me out is that the woman going do 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 doesn't just kind of sound like me. She sounds exactly like me. It is the weirdest thing. I got chills when I heard that the first time. And if I didn't know it better, I would swear that was a recording of my own voice. If Becky hadn't been taping at the exact same time, we wouldn't have caught that apparent doppelganger singing her little ditty. As I sifted through my recordings from our night at the Old Park Hotel, I came across another doppelganger incident. Later that evening, Greg saw my double in the hallway by a room we were in. As you can tell my, my laugh, you know, that I'm laughing in this next clip, I didn't take the moment seriously at the time. Here, take a listen. Oh, right here. Okay. Looks like you're over here. Hmm. I'm bilocating right now. There you go. <laughs> There's two two ways. Yeah, that's weird. No, I'm just here, really, as far as I know. It's kind of a short. Shorter version of me? Yeah. Weird. But now, skip, now I can't see it. The Isn't that weird? Since whatever it was looked and sounded like me, I guess I'm comfortable calling it a doppelganger. When I spoke to Greg about it later, he said that what he'd seen just then looked exactly like you, same hat, same dress, same everything. So my doppelganger wasn't just heard at the Old Park Hotel, but she was seen there too. And why was Greg the only one aware of my double that night? And what exactly causes a doppelganger anyway? I really don't know. For me, perhaps the biggest surprise from my time at the Old Park Hotel is that when I mentioned the whole doppel, doppel, well, I can't even say it now, doppelganger thing to Archie D. Bunker, he didn't roll his eyes or attempt to discredit the experience. Instead, Larry merely goes, perhaps it was your counterpart visiting us from her existence in the multiverse. Could my doppelganger truly be, as Larry suggested, a version of me from a parallel reality? Or is one of the spirits at the Old Park Hotel just a really good mimic? What do you think? Have you ever encountered a doppelganger? All I can say is that our night there was full of surprises and I really look forward to going back. The Old Park Hotel is just one of the many places included in my travel guide to haunted places, Paranormal Texas, and it's available right now on Amazon. Before you go, if you liked this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. I do post a new video every Sunday, but if you're in the mood for more content right now, you can drop by my website. It's just my name, TuiSnyder.com, just like at the top of the slide, I got it all spelled out. And you can even read one of my books if you want. Or you know what? You can even say hi to me on social media. I'm just at TuiSnyder all over the online world. So thanks again, and I will see you next time.